Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Todd Stevens. And you're watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. All right, 2-0 so far with Bant Spirits as we delve deeper into the modern gauntlet. Mm -hmm. This deck that was uh, made popular by Zan Say Sayed, uh, he placed uh, top four, I believe, in the team open recently. Yep. Uh, th the deck is really cool. I like yeah. it a lot. They're, it's very similar to a lot of the tribal decks we've seen in modern uh, past with uh, a bit of disruption with some of the creatures as well as a pretty fast clock and a lot of synergies between uh, the creatures themselves, specifically Supreme Phantom. Yeah, Supreme Phantom's the new one. It's The whole deck's just looking really uh, really impressive so far. It has good one drops with like Noble Hierarch and Wanderer, and then the three drops with Captain Spell Queller have been awesome. The, it's just a really impressive package of creatures that represent a fast clock, enough disruption, and the sideboard's really good too. So it's looking like the real deal. Speaking of sideboards, so far I've played against humans, where uh -huh. I sideboarded in two cards, just two, <laughs> two warships. Didn't uh, need them also. Played against uh, Jeskai Control, where I boarded in uh, Geist of St. Traff, Thalia... Uh, and, uh, and Unified, unified will. will. Okay, so yeah, you had some stuff there. Seven was a lot. Yeah. The next three matches, <laughs> I'm going to be citing in at least 11 cards in every single one of them. Wow. And th this is uh, more of a testament to how uh, Zan built his sideboard with a bunch of cards that are uh, very powerful sideboard effects that have splash damage across multiple matchups. You're going to see... Uh, KCI uh, in a few days here, uh, where I have uh, Rest in Peace to stop the Graveyard shenanigans, <laughs> Damping Sphere to stop them going off on a single turn. Yep. Uh, what else? Stony uh, Silence. Stony Silence to shut down all their artifacts. Thalia. Thalia to make everything cost more. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of I'm bringing in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, namely, I'm bringing in Guys St. Traft in all three of these matchups. It's just mm -hmm. a very fast clock uh, for, for combo decks. But what are you playing today? So today I'm going to be bringing uh, Blue Red Gift Storm. So... Uh, I don't usually play a ton of combo decks, but there's a lot of people that do. And so Blue Red Gift Storm is one of the more popular matchups you see on the uh, SCG Tour. So we want to see how Band Spirits does against that. So far, we've played against Humans and Jeskai, and it's been uh, doing good so far. But what about against a combo deck? We'll have to see. Yeah. All right. Well, I think a sideboard is going to play a big role here. So instead of doing the normal best two out of three, uh, even if one of us wins the first two games, we're going to play a third game. Uh, Post sideboard just to see uh, how things line up. So let's Perfect. go and get to the match and see who takes it down between Bant Spirits and Blue Red Gift Storm. All right, seven eleven game. So you goes first. Seven, you lose. Eleven, you win. If you're on eleven, the opponent rolls a seven. You get to go first all three games. Hey, I didn't. Roll hey, I rolled an eleven though. Oh. Well. <laughs> all right. So I'll still take the draw. At least it wasn't my fault this time. I don't think I can rightly mulligan this hand, but it's not very good. I, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, we we definitely need uh, to find some stuff. But that's what this deck just has tons of cantrips. We just got a couple cantrips, and so we'll be looking for our creatures. All right, no play on one. Your turn. Okay. That's a good draw. Now, I could shock in, but we already have a basic mount in our hand. So it's unlikely that we're going to need a second red source. I don't know. Maybe it's not that unlikely. So I just see Misty Rainforest from the other side of the battlefield, nothing else. I think it's perfectly fine to shock in. We'll, we'll go ahead and shock. All right, so I'm going to be at 19 because I'm going to shortcut my fetch. Yeah. You're going to be at 17 and play your cantrip. Yep. I'll be leading with Serum Vision. Oh, man, it's so good to have this card in my deck again. Instead of think twice. Oh, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Storm playing think twice? I guess it probably has. I mean, they've played Desperate Ravings before. That's pretty yeah. close. Um, all right, so we need the Ritual. We're going to keep the Ritual. And then the other the other cantrip, I think, can probably go. I don't think we need another cantrip here. I think we're just going to be looking for gas. So. All right, we'll untap. Take a draw. That was a good draw. Pop us out on curve. Uh, your turn. Gonna go ahead and fetch again. How many? One. All right, so I'll be at 16. I'm gonna fast fetch, but continue, yeah. continue doing your thing. All right, so I want to keep setting up. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with a slide of hand. 
that resolves. Look at the top two. Um, so I'm going to take this as a backup in case Todd has a path over there. So we'll take that and I'll pass the turn. All right. Uh, Fudge of Forest, EOT, I'm going to cast a Rattle Chains. Okay. All right, one tap. Just want to get some damage in here. I'll attack for two. Yep, Actually, 14. Yes, your turn. 14 to 18. So now we kind of see what's up. Now we can see that it's uh, likely a... So likely we got some Spell Quellers up here. So I think that's fine. We'll be okay with that. Let's go with a Goblin Electromancer. All right, I'm going to try to Spell Queller it. Yep, puts me to uh, 17. I'm going to get a planes. I want to keep my life total fairly high here just to make sure I don't get grape shotted out without him having to go through all the bells and whistles. Right. All right, all done. Are you going to yep. play a cantrip or something? Nope, all done. All right, so 17, 14. All right, just four. Yep. So I'm going to be going to nine. Right. I do kind of regret uh, not keeping that other cantrip on top right about now. Um, that would have been nice. Either of these last two turns, we've had the blue mana and haven't been able to use it. So I wish I did. We're uh, looking for, like, mana morphos is probably the the best card that, that we could use or just more or more rituals. And just playing a cantrip on the last two turns would have been nice. That was a terrible draw step, though. Let's see. I think I'm just going to continue passing the turn. All right, we're going to try to kill him this turn, I guess. We're going to go for a Coco. Hmm. If he remands it, we don't present lethal, but if he had remand, we weren't going to be able to present lethal anyway. Hmm. All right, I have an un unsubstantiate that I think I'm just going to use on the collected company and put that back in your hand. Okay. Go ahead. All right, draw for turn. Hmm. That changes things a little bit. All right, uh, just keep on attacking for four. So I'm down to five. Yep, your turn. All right, I will cast Brawl, Chief of Compliance, and I guess I'll use Blue and Red. How about this? Uh, resolves. Hmm. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough here. I don't. I'm just a mana short. We just couldn't find another ritual to really to really do what we want. Um. I think maybe our our plan is is these three. Starting with these and. Hope next turn goes better. I think that's what we're going to do. All right. So I like to ritual. So storm is two. So I have a couple options here. I can go for uh, a path to exile, which I think might be able to break up his combo just enough. Uh, I also have the option to go Coco to look for uh, a spell caller in response to either gifts I'm given or... Um, Passing Flames, since Passing Flames front side only costs four and technically a four man spell. I think the safest play is Path to Exile because this help. Uh, we can play around Remand or another Unsubstantiate this way. So we'll just go for that. Okay. Uh, so Storm's three now. 
Because Storm's each player, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I was pretty sure on that. But all right, I am going to go ahead and reman that path to exile. Okay. So um, this will make this four. So in order to play around another remand, what I'm going to do here is actually, in response to that remand resolving, uh, I don't want him to draw a remand, so I'm going to path this uh, with the other path out of my hand. Okay, so other path out of your hand, that's going to resolve. Okay. I'm going to... And that also keep him from being able to loot off a of brawl once the remand happens on this. Yep. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. So then that gets exiled. Okay, so then so remand, remand happens. Results. Yep, so that goes back to your hand. I draw a card. Yep, and then Death Ritual resolves. You'll get three. three. And let's, let's just double count the storm. So I've played two paths, a Brawl, a Remand, and a Desperate. Yeah, so five is the correct storm count. Hmm. So I'm going to go from three to one and six. So then there'll be... So then Grape Shot with six copies. If you have like a Rattle Chains or anything, I can't really... Like I'm not going to put extra copies on because it like it's just the Hexproof doesn't matter. So I think I'm just going to go three... Oh, because you can flash in a lord, so you can flash in a lord. So that's so that's why. So I think so. We do four two. two. Yeah, let's do four two. All right. So I am gonna flash in the the odds of me dying to a grape shot this turn are basically zero. Uh, so I'm gonna play this just at instant speed off of this. Or yeah. Maybe not. Now that you get the electromancer back, hold on. I might need to. One second. So this is six. If I play seven, you have two cards in hand. I have two cards in hand. So if it's Grape shot number two and another remand. They don't usually play more than like three or four total of the unsubstantiate remand. Well, I don't even have the mana for grape shot remand and grape shot, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So these die. You if get it was like grape back. shot, grape shot. <laughs> All right. So storm is currently seven. This is in play. I think that's casting. So you go up to eight. Uh, this this I already counted this to six. So this no, is I seven. Know. Yeah, and this is eight. Or you, you recast. Oh, because I recast this. the Electromancer. Yeah, the Electromancer is eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we just. All right. So we're at five, and we know you have a path and a company. Mm -hmm. So I think we just yolo and go for it, and just see if we hit a ritual with this Morphos. Wow, so Morphos. Good. Yeah, that was what we drew up the Blue red or blue blue. Um. I think I think blue red is fine. That's still too red, and I think that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So blue red. So yeah, just do that. Let's see if we hit a ritual. Hmm. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, opt. Okay. Get rid of that. Scry. Bottom. Do I even actually want to scry this to the bottom? Maybe. Maybe I just play this. You have one path, and just try to go next turn. Um, let's see. All right, so if I oh yeah, so I just shuffled in my hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, no. uh, so if I all right, so if I play another bear, then next turn we'll have gifts, and then if we get the standard pile, and you give us. You get to uh, pass and play no matter what. Yeah, if we get you have two bears. You, you, so if you have one bear though and no ritual, right? And I, let's say I path one, right? Yeah. I'll wait till your upkeep. Yeah, upkeep probably, path. but maybe. Yeah, oh, I but guess, that, but I then guess upkeep the I can just gifts in response still. So I think I think actually just the bear is a good, a good good call. So I'll just draw the bear and play it. Okay. And fast turn. So now this might be a. I need to. So he only has one card in hand, so I might need to just try to. Coco into another spell caller on whatever his big spell is next turn. Because the only things that really kill me next turn are Pass and Flames or Gifts Ungiven. Well, we drew a Canopy, so I think uh, that's fine. Too. Yeah, so Canopy's great. You gotta do both. Alright, Tech, put you a four. Yep. Alright, uh, pass turn on, on your upkeep. I'm going to uh, path targeting Electromancer. Alright, I will also uh, on upkeep uh, two mana gifts. All right, I will uh, take yeah. one down to sixteen. K 
Cast Coco. Storms up to three. All right. Two. Don't do it. Don't do it. No whammies. Nope. All right. I'm Woo. pretty sure I'm dead. Yeah, I think so. All right. So then Gifts resolves, and I'll go get the standard pile. There's three rituals in there. Passing flames, and then you just kill me. Yep. Uh, if I if I would have put the bear at the bottom, the next card was the ritual, so I think I had it last turn. But, I mean, that's obviously not. Okay, and then you want to put the rituals in the yard? Or what do you want to do? I, don't, I think you're just dead. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, just it doesn't really matter. Thinking if there's a... Yeah, uh, we'll put... Uh, you can have... Oh, and then I'm going to be getting... One of these is going to get passed. Mm -hmm. So if I put the... Yeah, it's the same as getting a mana. I don't know. doesn't matter. Uh, you can have uh, Ritual Passing Flames in hand. Doesn't it, I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So you can still just cast it and cast them all out the graveyard. And then draw... Um. Yep. Yeah, I'll just have enough mana. To be able to keep on doing this and oh, do the you normal sort of I mean, stuff. If you, if, all right, you I, just, just, all right. just for the for yeah. Them. Okay. Just you know, people um, they you know they've seen the song and dance before. It's it's important for them to you to know. see how this works. All right, so we're going to cast party ritual for red. Yep. So, so we got three red. Sorry, that's in the graveyard. All right, cast that. We got three red. Um, and then this just costs three, so mm -hmm. we'll just use the three cast pass and flames, and then. We will uh, play this for three red, and then four, five red, six, seven red. All right, and then with seven red, we'll use uh, one red to make it. So we'll go to six, six red. No, you're you're getting blue off that probably. You have too much red floating. Wait. <laughs> So three, five, seven, isn't this? Yeah, I and have then seven? Metamorphose goes up to. So go three, to no, because you cast the Pass the Flames for three. Obviously right, so that that first one. yeah, so the first one was so done. So you're flashing them back. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. So it goes three, then All right, five. So long seven. story short, I'm at uh, sixteen. He's just gonna play a bunch of rituals. He can cast Gifts and Given again because he has a ton of mana. And he yeah. can just do the same exact thing with a bunch more mana floating. Uh, but getting Grape Shot is one of the cards, and then he's gonna cast a Grape Shot, and then a second Grape Shot, and then they all target me for a hundred damage. So yep. Dead. Okay. All because of this little guy. Yeah. A little wizard. All right. So for my side of things, uh, I want to be boarding in uh, hate disruption pieces, but also uh, a card that I think is going to increase our clock significantly in Geist of St. Trapped. Now, Geist of St. Trapped is pretty mediocre against decks that play uh, a bunch of... Uh, you know, blockers and just like ground pounding creatures uh, because of, you don't really have a way to bounce them or remove them. So guys saying traffic gets gummed up in combat a bit, but when your opponent doesn't have that many ways to actually interact with guys saying traffic and doesn't have a lot of creatures to put in the way, I think guys is just an insanely good clock. That's definitely worth having. Uh, in my article, I talked a bit about, in the main deck, just charting out the Phantasmal Images for the Geist of St. Traft. While there is some value in image copying your own Drogskull Captain, effectively making all of your creatures hexproof, including each other, um, you know, you you actually just end up with like an unbeatable board state in a lot of the fair matchups. However, Geist of St. Traft is a card that can just single-handedly win games on its own, and you'll see me boarding it a lot in the, the next uh, few videos. Thalia is generally good against decks that have more spell or uh, non-creature spells than creatures. Damping Sphere is a, a hate card that's pretty good against Storm. They really can't do much if they don't get it off the battlefield. And then Rest in Peace is not great at interacting with the deck, but it does shut off their ability to use Pass and Flames. And even though uh, I do have a bunch of these cards that are coming in that don't actually uh, do anything... You know, they they force the opponent to actually deal with it before they're able to combo kill you. So I, I like boarding those in. But because we're boarding in cards like Damage Sphere and Rest in Peace, I think cutting Collector Company and Moreland Haunt is pretty good. These are our grindy cards, our cards that help us go long in matchups. And I think whenever you board in a bunch of stuff like Unified Will, Rest in Peace, Damping Sphere, and Stony Silence, it's okay to board out Collector Company because you're actually just trimming the overall number of creatures uh, in your deck. But that's not necessarily the case here because we're bringing in five creatures and cutting four. But if we weren't cutting Collect a Company, 
we would be having to cut creatures more than likely. Yeah. I want to keep in Path Exile in this matchup simply yeah. because interacting with his mana creature is just too good. Um, and then I think our worst creatures are Image and Selfless Spirit. Okay, yeah, that's all completely reasonable. On my side, I'm not going to be changing up the deck too much. I'm going to be basically uh, forcing Todd to stop me, you know, even though I'm not going to be able to really combo off through Damping Sphere or Thalia or uh, Rest in Peace. I'm going to basically make him have those cards. And uh, we're, we are bringing in some interaction for the other Promlac permits. A Braid can hit Damping Sphere or uh, any of the creatures, and, you know, Lightning Bolt, the same thing. And we're just kind of trimming down our worst uh, one mana cantrip and then uh, remand since you don't have a ton of instant speed interaction. You just have the paths. And, and uh, you know, we're going to keep on trying to do the same thing. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, remand is specifically good against decks that are very sorcery speed based. The fact mm -hmm. that I can uh, let you rot with your remand in hand, like let that mana just kind of fade away, uh, it. it it really gathers a lot of strength, uh, Remand does, when your opponent is tapping out on their own turn. Because you're usually able to slow that down with the Remand and then untap and do a bunch of stuff. So if you're playing against a deck like Spirits, where most of my cards are going to be played at instant speed, it's a lot worse. All right, we're here for game two. I'm on the play, and my hand is very good. A lot of really great interactive stuff. We don't really have our, our Storm parts necessarily. We don't really have cantrips, rituals, or anything. But we got some lands and some sideboard cards, so I think it's a keep. All right, we'll lead off with a Maelstrom Wander, get the beats on. And that's a good one in particular because that does stop, that can like counter my instance as well. Mm -hmm. So that's annoying. But I'm going to just play this Steam Vents Intent. That's not something you see out of Storm very often. I'm going to play a Thali on two. And unfortunately, Thali is not a spirit, but it is powerful enough as a sideboard card to come in. So I'm in 19, then I'm attack for one and put you to 19. All right. We're going to try to protect our life total by. Fetching basics when we can, so we don't lose to Grape Shot at some weird point. That's well, a bear roll. I'm going to play my bear that can block Thalia. Yeah. And Brawl and Thalia just basically cancel each other out. Right. <laughs> and if you so, get another, uh, like, Goblin Electromancer on the battlefield, then... Uh, yeah, then we're still going through it. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to get in damage here, even at the expense of giving him mana. Uh, so we're going to path that and then hit you for three. I'm going to go ahead and shortcut this Flooded Strand as well. Yeah, I think Island's the right thing to get. I'm thinking, so we have a we have another island in our hand, so I'm thinking about getting Mountain. Yeah, I, yeah I'll, I'll just get Mountain. Okay. I don't think we need all four of our lands to be blue lands. All right, we're shortcutting my fetch. I'm at 18. Uh, you are at uh, 16. 16, yeah. Path Exile is not the greatest removal spell for these Brawls and Electromancers, but taking them off the battlefield and yeah. giving them a land is definitely a, a trade up. Yeah, removal spells are just so so clutch anyway. Like you need them, mm -hmm. even if they're not the best, you still need it. Okay, let's let's see. Um. Yeah, okay, so we'll just tap these two. All right, so we're going to play Electromancer and red pay, uh, like, these those trade with the mana thing, so I still get to keep the one up and yep. bolt that. I'm just going to do that right now before you can play uh, any creatures at instant speed and pump up the Wanderer. Mm -hmm. um, and then, actually, sorry, and then after that, uh, Serum Vision. I think that's one that I would like to bait uh, the Wanderer I'm, with. yeah. So would you like to counter this? I think so. I just okay. want to keep them off of total cards in hand. Yep. Go ahead. Go. Ooh. I want to get that attack in there, but... So I wouldn't know that, that Todd wouldn't have Collect Company, but still could have Spell Queller, but still, like, attacking into a company here is, is kind of rough. So you're at 18... Yep. I do have interaction though, but then I'd have to be forced to use my interaction. And I think I think that's okay to use the interaction actually, since we don't really have much else in our hand besides interaction. We're going to need to get damage in, so I think just sitting back forever is not going to be in our best I'll try interest. Spell crawler. All right, so sp spell crawler is going to resolve, and then uh, I will abrate it. Okay. All right, so I'll take, take two. Two go 16. to sixteen, and because we're we're getting the beats the beats in, that's yeah, our plan. It's pretty good. Yeah. Your turn. Oh, 
Ooh. A single gifts and given here is basically going to be lights out if it can, you know, resolve. Let's go to combat. Yep. Attack. All right, I'm at twelve. All right, second main. We'll try gifts. I'll try to quell it. Okay. Uh, Queller happens. Rut row. Whenever they grab the storm counter, I'm usually <laughs> dead. Uh, red. We'll do Morphos. So that's our third one. Add blue, blue. Okay. Draw. With the blue, blue, I'm going to wipe away the Queller and then recast gifts. Um, I think our standard pile should get us there with having the second. So Desperate, Pyretic, and Morphos. Hmm. Okay, uh, Put the two rituals in the yard, I guess. Yeah. So the two rituals in the yard make it... So you can't quite do it this Because this would be two mana and that. Yeah, so it makes me have to have another mana source, which I did draw a land off of that. So I have the other mana source, so so, so then we so just get to go. Manamorphose up to two. Because now this only costs two because yeah. of this, so we'll have one left. So we'll get two red. Gross. Because we need to have another red. Draw... And then use the blue and one red to pass in flames. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep, and then from there we get to do the rituals and everything. And, and the manamorphos again, then gifts yep, and gifts. Double manamorphos, gifts, and grape shots. Okay, so yep. that's the match, but we're going to play a third game post sideboard just to get a little more feel for the matchup. Man, Storm's messed up. Yep. All right, we're here for game three. I'm going to be on the play here, and my hand's pretty good, so we're going to keep. Yeah, we don't have the interaction like we had last time. We just kind of have like our our like kind of normal storm hand. So that's what we're gonna be looking for with the Serum Vision. Is looking for interaction probably. All right, let me go to eighteen and play Wanderer. Okay, your turn. Um, I will go to eighteen as well. The Wanderer is gonna be able to counter something anyway, like like we said before. So I think I'm gonna let it happen here, mostly because uh, we have the Supreme Phantom to get in more damage later on. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so we'll draw and then scry two. Um, while these are both very good cards, they're not really exactly what we need. I think I think actually I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep this one on top uh, to hedge against interaction from from Todd. I'll put the other one at the bottom. The other one just replaces itself though. That's just a just replace no. All right, we're still gonna put in the bottom. Sorry, it's okay. All right, so we're self spirit. Uh, pump the wonder by one and attack for two. Okay, so uh, sixteen for me. Yeah, you're at sixteen. I'm still at twenty. Or oh, sorry, I'm at eighteen. I shocked. Yeah, your turn. All right, let's get a basic island and play a bear. I'm just gonna play this before it can get spell quelled. Mm-hmm. And so I'm at 15. Go ahead. Uh, we'll fetch. I'm just going to take one down to 17. I'm going to get a forest. <clears throat> yeah, even Wander is just a pretty annoying card in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, if I can get it up to like two power on your turn somehow. Uh, so a lot of times it'll just, you know, gum up the combo, countering a Gifts Ungiven or a Pass the Flames, or, mm -hmm. or threaten to and force you to play differently, you know? Yeah. Cards like Maelstrom Wonder usually just force the opponent to play differently as opposed to actually doing what it says on the card. Uh, so Phantom, trigger this, and then I'm so, going to attack for six. Yep, so that puts me down to nine. And to play around Remand, I kind of want to pad the Exile now, but I can counter his Remand with Maelstrom Wonder, so maybe I just wait and say go. Okay. All right, and then upkeep. Oh, pass. All right. Uh, 
the version of Storm that uh, Stevens is playing is uh, a little bit different than what we're used to seeing people like Caleb Share play. There are eight total copies of Goblin Electromancer and Brawl, which a lot of versions only play like six. And it feels like he's really overloading my Path to Exiles. Yeah. Um, I think I won another land, another another land drop. So let's try Slide of Hand. Mm -hmm. Top two, no land drop, but do find some interaction. So we'll take we'll take that, and I guess not really a reason to wait since if we're just gonna bolt anyway, let's go ahead and bolt. And I'd like to bolt the uh, wonder. Okay, I'm gonna use the spear to protect it. Okay. Go ahead. Force draw on the deck. <laughs> uh, attack for three. All right, so I'm down to six. Okay, I'll play Bird of Paradise. Nice. <laughs> Your turn. Hey, it flies. That's it's on, true. It's on theme. That's, that is true. Hmm. Slide a hand. We'll take this one. Um, Spellcrawler is definitely a huge problem, but Todd does just have one card. So hopefully that's not Spellcrawler. If I just kind of pass here and wait till my turn, right now we're looking at three damage coming in. A Queller would represent lethal, though. So I guess we do have to do something. Yeah, all right, let's start with, let's just do this, actually. I'd like to uh, Manamorphose. Okay. What are you making? Uh, red, blue. Okay. Manamorphose. Okay. Red, blue. Storm count is three. Storm count is three. Yeah. Grape shop. Okay, so storm's four. So storm's four. How are you targeting? Targeting, I'm going to do one, two, three, four. He did. <laughs> okay. Just, just want to get that thing off the you table. You got him. All right. Gone. Go ahead. All right. Check for one. Down to five. Your turn. No, another wanderer. So many wanderers. So after playing this matchup a little more, I I think I'm just wrong about the collective companies. I feel like. I need some big explosive thing. Uh, after Zardboard, he's got like a decent amount of chip removal with bolts, braids. You know, he can use his grape shots uh, defensively. Uh, and like, if I had had Collector Company at any point in these last two games, I think I would have been very happy about it. So you you play test and you learn. You know? Yep. Yep. Resolves. You know I don't have spell call. I would have spell called your <laughs> anamorphosis. Yeah, that, that just, first man. And then just killed you. So. Yeah, and then killed me. Um, I think I still. So I. All right, so that's a two-two. So if I if I try to ritual, you just counter it. So I think I just. Uh, I guess I just pass the turn. Drag skull, captain, kill you. Ooh, I think this kills you too, unless you got something. All right, that resolves. Attack for five. I do have a wipe away, so I can wipe away the wanderer. Well, I can't respond to that. So yeah. you take uh, take one, two, 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 because the other is supreme phantom. Yeah. So I'm down to three. Yep. And then post combat, play this. Yep. Your turn. So now that's a three. So that you are going to be able to counter basically any spell you want, basically. Well, we'll see. <laughs> he said before producing six thousand <laughs> mana. Yeah. Uh, right. So th we're actually in a weird spot here. I, I can, uh, if he doesn't have a Manamorphose or a, um, 
remember what it's called. A pass in flames. I can actually just counter this, or unless he pays three, and then that'll tap him out of all of his blue mana. I'm not sure if it's worth it. It's probably not, but there's a chance that if I don't do that, the, the value of Wander will just diminish to zero by the end of this turn. So um, it's tough, but I think I need to let it resolve and, and hope okay. that you can't combo through this, but you probably will be able to. All right, so three, so I'll use one mana ritual again. Um, two, so five. that goes to four. Oh, no, because no, you, you yeah, go, yeah, 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 you gain two each time, and you five. went up to three, yep. then up to five. Storm is two. Morphos? Yeah, then Morphos would have got me. So you're going to go down to four and up to two blue. That resolves. Um, I'm going to actually. Three. So I, I may not want two blue. I may not want all that blue. But I, I guess I already have so much yeah, red. Yeah, you have so much red, it doesn't so, matter. So, yeah. So. so there we go. Two blue. Storm three. Use one of the blue. Let's go ahead and just do this now. One, two, three gifts. Yeah. All right, so gifts, we'll go get standard pile. I'm pretty sure this is just too much mana now. Yeah, I mean this. Yeah, this is this is just too much mana now. Because even you know, like if you. All right, I'll put uh put these two in the graveyard. Yeah, and then, um, so I'll use one red, and Morphos. Okay. Get two blue. Uh, draw from Morphos. Ritual. Yeah, that that'll do it for sure. Yeah. So Four. now, even if I counter, unless he pays three, uh, so he, it only costs three, so it goes to three floating and two more. So uh, he's left with two after I use this, and then he just plays everything out of his graveyard again. And yeah, you know, storms a billion. Man, yeah, the storm deck's good. Yeah, storm's great. All right, so the first black mark against Bant Spirits mm -hmm. comes at the hands of the Almighty Storm. Yeah, man, that looked really impressive. Even like we thought that was gonna be a, a real tough matchup. You didn't see your best sideboard cards with Damping Sphere and Rest in Peace. Yeah, but even when I did, you drew a bunch of your ways to interact. You know, you mm -hmm. have so many ways to dig through your deck with your uh, Serum Visions, even Manamorphos, things like that. You're going to find your Braids and your Wipe Aways and your Lightning Bolts whenever I present you with something that's a little too troublesome. And I think because you have so much of that kind of interaction, uh, I need to reevaluate how I sideboard in this matchup. Uh, you know, I thought cutting Collector Company was, was fine, and after playing the games, if I'd had a Collector Company in either game two or three, I would have been very happy. Yeah, you just kind of ran out of stuff. Like, you just mm -hmm. kind of had, like, four or five lands and just, just kind of ran out of gas. I'm, like, and, like, chipping in for two yeah, or like, one at a time. It's just not enough. No, yeah, your creatures, like, the, yeah, like just, like, the two drops just weren't, weren't big enough. Yeah, I think maybe what I need to do is uh, just board out the path to exiles but they no, they the felt path. they felt good but yeah you need the but paths i just didn't have pressure and yeah. but i i think that's the two-sided uh blade that the storm presents is that they have these mana creatures and if you don't kill them they usually just win the game but if you do kill them they they can just wait a turn like you're spending yeah. a lot of your time and resources to interact with these things and it ultimately will buy them time and hopefully enough time to find another copy uh, we saw Spellcrawler is definitely a real important card, and uh, like those other games, like if you had a Spellcrawler, you know, it's over. And Company is, while it's not, you know, exactly Spellcrawler, because we saw game one, it didn't hit it, it will hit it a decent amount at the time and just gives you, like, kind of more copies of Spellcrawler. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another uh, reason, I guess, to keep company in. Yeah, I mean, there there's definitely some some things you can play around with. Sideboarding, and f for me, is is never clean cut. There's always yeah. stuff you can learn. You can always figure out uh, one cut here, one cut there to to make things perfect. And and it all also depends on how your opponent's building their deck and right. how they're sideboarding as well. So it's it's this this weird little song and dance that you have to figure out on the fly a lot of times. And after a game two, if I had you know. Had uh, what, or if I knew what I know now, I would have reboarded for game three differently and maybe uh, brought back in the collect company, especially on the play. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And if you play against a storm pilot that maybe just doesn't have as many electromancers, and if you kind of think that maybe they're trimming those and maybe going like piece of the puzzle, all that kind of stuff, maybe mm -hmm. you can start boarding out some of the paths then. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right that it it's all kind of match dependent on what you're playing against and what how your opponents uh, uh, react and act. Yeah. 
All right, well, that's going to be all for me and Mr. Stevens today. Uh, tomorrow, I believe we're going to be playing against a little bit Tron. Yeah. A little Tron. Mono Green Tron. I think this actually might be a pretty bad matchup for Tron. Spirits. So if Spirits can take it down convincingly, that'll be a big plus for, uh, for me being sold on the archetype. But mm. that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. For Todd Stevens, I'm Todd Anderson, and we'll see you tomorrow.